To make my game more fun, I'm going to introduce a few collectible things, gold coins. It'll introduce the idea of variables, which is a really important concept. I'm going to start by creating a sprite, of course, which will be my gold coin. Gold color. Yeah, that looks like a gold coin. Not forgetting my collision polygon. Not forgetting to name it. And doesn't need any behavior, I don't think. It's just going to sit there waiting to be picked up. And let's just have one, two, just a few of them scattered around. And just to make a bit of a challenge, we'll put one up here. So you have to jump onto the uh, sign platform. So what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's plenty. So I need to be able to pick them up. So hopping into the event sheet, uh, one other obvious thing that I'm going to do is player on collision with another object, the coin. We're just going to destroy the coin. Always a good idea to check that, that behaves as you think it will. So if I jump into here and go pick up a coin or two, yep, that's certainly doing what I would want it to. Now, if we're going to pick up coins, we need to keep really need to keep track of how many coins we've got. And this is where the concept of variables come in. So I'm just going to right click in this big space down here and add a global variable. Call it what I want. Something descriptive is good, though, because you might end up with a bunch of different variables. Coin count. It's a number. Initial value zero. That looks about right. And that's now appeared up here. Um, it's only in this event sheet, but it's now because it's global, it's available throughout the entire game. So what I'm going to add as an action, as well as destroying the coin, I'm going to, under system, add to the coin count variable a value of 1. Now, just to demonstrate this is working, I'm going to run in debug mode. We can always run in normal mode, but I'm going to run in debug mode, because what this does is it shows me the global variables down here, and I see coin count is on 0. So now if I go and run and jump and get some coins, coin count has gone up 1, two, three, four. So I've got this number down here. Um, now we don't normally run in debug mode of course, so we want to find some way of making this number visible to the user. So let's just hop into the layout and create a text box. Not a text box, sorry. A text box is for user input. A text is for, user, um, is for text display. So I'm just going to create a text here. I'm going to give it a name which is txt coin count. I like to call, because I've got a coin count variable already, by saying this is text coin count, it, it makes it clear what's in there. Uh, initial text, I'm going to put a zero there, so it displays a zero to begin with. And I'm just going to put that somewhere on my screen. Top left corner would be good. And Obviously, this isn't connected to anything at the moment. I'll need to do that in my event sheet. So what I'm going to do in my event sheet, text coin count, and right down the bottom, there is set text. And I'm going to tell it to use the value stored in that variable. You see it's got speech marks at the moment. So if I put something in there, that's the actual text that will be displayed. But if I delete that, including deleting the speech marks, and start typing coin count, you can see it comes up with the variable that I created that global variable. So when I put that there, it actually goes and gets the value stored in that variable rather than putting up the word coin count. Really important concept there. And let's just check that it actually behaves as we want to. Well, it's kind of hard to tell because it's off the top of the screen, but let's go up there. Oh, yeah, you could just see that it's a four and yeah, it's going up as I collect my coins. Um, so that's pretty much solved that, except for the annoying fact that that coin is off the top. So I think we've got time. Uh, the next video, I'll show you how to keep that fixed in one place.